Let's move on to simplifying algebraic expressions. It really doesn't matter whether your base is a number or a variable. Your exponent laws still apply the same way. So let's simplify this one here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put the like bases together. Because that's an M and that's an N, I can't put those two together. Two different variables, two different bases, apples and oranges, not the same. Let's put our m's together. So I've got m to the power of 4 and m squared. Now look at my n's. I've got n to the negative 2 and n to the power of 3. Now when I look at those m's, I can use, now when I look at those m's, I can use the product of powers law. Look over at the n's, I can use the product of powers laws on that pair too. So my m's, m to the 4 plus 2. In that case, my m is going to be the power of 6. When I look at my n's, at minus 2 plus 3, I'm looking at n to the power of 1. I don't have to bother with a 1. If we write no power in there, we assume it is a 1. There's my final answer. n to the power of 6 times n. Let's move on to this one. In this example, we're going to follow the same steps. We're going to collect the like terms. In this case, I'm going to write them out separately, but we're going to end up putting them together in the, in the long run. Let's start with the coefficients in front. I've got 6 over 14. Then I'm going to move on to my x's. I've got x to the power of 4 over x. And my y's, I've got y to the minus 3 over y squared. Those are all multiplied together. Now 6 over 14, we're going to treat that like any other fraction. Simplify it as much as you can. I divide both by 2, so I end up with 3 over 7. Next, when I look at my x's and y's, I'm looking at a quotient of powers. So my x's, that's going to be x to the 4 minus 1. And my y's, it's going to be y to the minus 3 and subtract the denominator exponent, 3 minus 2. Rewriting that, I've got 3 sevenths, 4 minus 1, so I've got x to the power of 3. And my y's, I've got y to the power of minus 5. I'm going to rewrite it so I don't have any negative exponents. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to flip that y down to the bottom of the expression. 3 sevenths stays the same. x cubed stays the same. In my numerator, I've got 3x cubed. And in my denominator, I've got that 7 and y to the power of 5. I've now simplified that algebraic expression. Now here's one that looks like fun. 25 a to the power of 4 b squared and all of that is taken to the 3 halves power. I could take that fractional exponent and convert everything into a radical. In fact I'm going to have to do that later on for parts of it. But before we get there let's use our exponent rules to simplify this. In this case I'm using power of a product. I'm also using power of a power. I'm going to apply that 3 halves to every part of that term inside the brackets. And because some of those parts, like say the a to the power of 4 and the b squared, already have powers, I'm going to have to use power of a power on those parts. So when I rewrite this, I'm looking at 25 to the 3 halves power. I'm looking at a to the power of 4 to the 3 halves power. And I'm looking at b squared to the 3 halves power. Let's deal with that 25 first. We've got a number to the 3 halves power. If you go back to a previous section and you remember how to deal with fractional exponents, the denominator becomes the index of a radical and the numerator becomes the power. So this becomes the square root of 25, because 2 is in my denominator, taken to the power of 3. Moving on, a to the power of 4 times 3 halves. Using my power of a power rule, I'm going to multiply those two together. Let's just tuck it over here on the side. I've got 4 times 3 halves. Sweet, that fraction went away. I'm looking at a to the power of 6. Moving on to our b, same thing. We're looking at power of a power. Awesome. Same thing again. My fraction went away, so it's b to the power of 3. All that's left is to evaluate the radical in the front. In fact, let's do that on the side here too. Square root of 25 is 5. That's 5 cubed. 5 cubed gives me 125. Let's write that down. We have 125 times a to the power of 6 times b cubed. There is my simplified algebraic expression. And it's not nearly as messy as it was when it started.